Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about a gun that you almost never see. In fact, if I went to YouTube, I couldn't really find any examples of a complete kit of a Borchardt. Uh, I did find, of course, Ian McCullum did one from Rock Island, and it was just the gun. And then I also uh, saw one person shoot one, and that was Craig Gottlieb, and I'll show you a clip of that. But I wanted to do this video because this is a complete kit. We're gonna unpack it here in a minute. I think it's really important to go through the whole thing. It's just an engineering marvel how they got this all together in this little case. I just have to show it to you. I hate to use the word epic because I probably overused epic video. So this is just gonna be an incredible video. I think you're gonna really enjoy. Uh, first step is, let's unpack this Borchardt. Okay, first of all is the case. Obviously, there are brass studs. It looks like, well, that one is smashed. Maybe this was replaced. I don't know. And then this was a, a tag for the name. I guess whoever bought it, you could have it engraved. Uh, that was not done in this case. This strap looks original. And it does have a lock. It does close down all the way, by the way. It all fits. I wanted, to, I wanted to show you. It's incredible that everything is contained in this box. And the bottom, it looks about the same. It has the same brass studs. Nothing exciting yet. But you open it up and you get that <gasps> moment. Look at that. It's, uh, the felt uh, obviously has some, some wear in it, but um, I'm just being real careful about the hinges. In fact, let's put something behind there. So what we have here is all the parts you need for this Borchardt, and I would even call it a system. There's a complete system here that, uh, again, I can't believe it all fit in here. Uh, first thing that I notice is there are four magazines uh, that all match the gun. I, the gun number is uh, 508, and we're going to show you four magazines. They all fit exactly in here like that all fit. So uh, first let's pull out the strap. I'll show you how the strap goes, goes on, uh, but this is complete with the strap. Again, never found one that had the original strap. It has four original magazines, all numbered to the gun. 508. I'm going quickly. Sorry if you missed it. 508, 508, and then of course the fourth one is in the gun. It has this little doohickey here, which uh, everything has a purpose, and I could not figure out what the heck this is. What the heck is it? So I'll show you. Uh, I'll have a little fun with you in what I thought uh, you did with this, but I turned out to be wrong. Next, we have some original. This looks like probably original container with uh, Vaseline <laughs> inside. Some, they used most of it. But this is metal Waffen Vaseline. So there is uh, probably the original Vaseline that came with the gun. This is probably not an original piece of cloth. Um, this, what the heck is it? I'm going to show you. I had to putz around with it. Uh, 508, number to the gun. Took us, it took me a while to figure out what that does. Again, there's nothing on the internet that tells you how to assemble all this. Now we'll pull, we'll pull out the most important. Well, hold on. Look in there. See this in here? little pins and things like that, but there is, there is one item that is very useful. This actually comes with a screwdriver. By the way, there's the, there's the key to the lock in the front. We'll put that right there so we don't lose it, but that's the original key to the lock. It comes with this screwdriver. Now, this does not have a serial number in it. Uh, yeah, that's the thinner part. This pops down in here and then screws on, and there's different sizes to the screwdriver. So, again, it's a complete kit. Uh, we'll set that over here, just unpacking it. Now we'll take uh, the, the, main, the main part, pull this out. Uh, look at that holster, just incredible. Now, I have seen on auction uh, these with a holster, and they're usually completely destroyed. This is still intact. It holds on there nicely. I didn't thread this through here. Let me show you. Um, this obviously will go thread in and back out, in and back out. You can see where it was threaded in there. I didn't do that because uh, I don't want to break the strap and I just wanted to show you real quickly how that fastens onto the wooden stock. You see that? What the heck is it? I figured it out. You see that? That, I'm not sure if I figured it out, but we're going to figure it out together. This turns, but what the heck does it do? Uh, oh, one other thing. Stock 508. Here's another loop. Uh, where does that go? We'll figure that out. Okay, let's pull this apart now. All we'd have to do is pull this down. 
Um, I'm going to close this down because, again, I don't want to uh, break the hinge, but I wanted to make sure you saw there is a place for a cleaning rod here, and uh, we'll leave that in there. But it, it's complete all the way down to the screwdriver and the cleaning rod. Let's close this down uh, just so it doesn't get hurt at all. Now, if you remember, this was under here, and I actually pulled it off off camera because um, I don't want any of this leather. It's, it's cracked and fragile. And so I had to work it off extremely carefully because it's a very tight fit. So I had to kind of, you know, move it off there really slowly. So I did that off camera. Here you can see where the, the toggle is. Um, there's just, it's form fitted. And we pull this out. Again, it's a, it's a tight fit, all original. Just a beautiful gun, uh, certainly better than anything else I could find on the internet. Probably one of the nicest I've ever seen. If I take this grip off, again, I did that off camera, um, but you can see 508. Uh, just had to be real careful putting it here because this is the safety that pops up. Uh, safe and fire. That is the safety. What's interesting about this is I can see the serial number is actually handwritten right there, 508 with pencil, but then also uh, stamped in. Uh, it's also, if you look over here, you can see the same thing over here. So redundancy, uh, but they numbered it twice. Uh, Grips back on, and this is the mag release button. So, so now we're getting similar to a Luger. First of all, you see the crown. Uh, actually, it's a crown B and a crown U, which were early commercial proofs even for the, uh, the Luger. You'll see them on the 1900 commercials. Uh, there's a crown U here. Crown B, Crown U. In fact, uh, they call them bug proofs because on the Luger, on the Luger barrel, would have a, it'll have a Crown B, U, and a G right there. Um, and then at the top, you can see Waffenfabrik, and this, in this case, it is low in Berlin. They made a thousand of them with that logo, and then after that, it said DWM at the top, just like the Luger. This is the patent number. Uh, there's not much else on this gun, just to see how beautiful it is, but other here you see system Borchardt. You see fire blue on the trigger. You see this toggle, looks a lot like a Luger. And let's see, this, we'll call this a, a bulbous, <laughs> a bulbous back end. Um, I, that's, I think Ian used that word to say bulbous back end, that's the best way to describe it. This thing is awkward in that the, Handle goes straight down, so most of them are bent back for a, a, it's a better feel. Um, but this big bulbous back end, that is actually the main spring right here is curled around. In the Luger and most other semi-automatics, you'll see that uh, the, the main spring is usually in the handle of the gun. In this case, this is the whole back end is the main spring housing. And the toggle works. Uh, just like a Luger, except this piece here just uh, gives you a better grip uh, for pulling this back. And it's actually a very smooth action. I'd say uh, almost a little easier than the actual Luger itself. I mean, Luger, sometimes the toggles are a little stiff. This comes back very easily. I'm not sure the purpose of these two holes. Maybe it's to uh, allow the gas to escape. That's, that would make the most sense. Um, but when we pull this back and you look down in there, you might say, what the heck is that? Um, but that is part of the box magazine. Now, it's important to mention the magazine because uh, that was probably the second most important thing about this design. I just noticed the trigger right here has 508 on it, and there's a couple other spots. This, the, uh, the bulbous <laughs> end has 508 on it, but let's get back to the magazine. The second most important part of this invention by Hugo Borchardt um, is that this was the first uh, semi-automatic pistol ever commercially developed, the first one ever developed. Uh, there were other prototypes, mostly uh, by the Austrian army, but none of those were adopted. There were just a few prototypes. None of them survived. Uh, nobody, I'm not sure uh, what they would have looked like, but they didn't look like this. He uh, had two things. One, first semi-automatic, so every other semi-automatic uh, came after this, and this, by the way, is, is also not only called the Borchardt, but the C93. 1893 was the first semi-automatic uh, put into commercial development. The second invention, which made all of this a lot more practical, was the use of the uh, box magazine. 
Now, Borchardt learned uh, a lot of uh, these techniques uh, when he moved to the United States from Germany in the 1800s. Uh, so in the 18, late 1800s, 1890s, he worked for Winchester for a while. He actually learned a lot from Winchester about the lever action, and that gave him an, uh, the idea for some of the uh, system with the toggle. Uh, but from there, he went to the Sharps Rifle Company, um, and he worked with them, and there they developed the box magazine uh, for use with rifles. Uh, he improved upon that, and he used a box, first person to use a box magazine with a pistol, and first uh, pistol to ever have a semi-automatic action. Everything before this was a revolver, um, mostly by Colt and uh, uh, Smith & Wesson and some European companies, but this is the first semi-automatic ever made. First use of a box magazine, and as I said, he improved upon the Sharps magazine, uh, but still, you can see how this loaded. Uh, that was the system that he used. There were two springs, um, and the cartridge was a 7.63. Uh, it's obsolete today. They don't make them anymore. And if you find a cartridge, an original cartridge, you're going to pay uh, $100 or more, which is one of the reasons you don't see anybody shooting these on the Internet. Uh, so the, the ammunition is impossible to find. You might say, well, the broom handle uses 7.63, but the load is a little bit different, and so they don't recommend using the Mauser 7.63, but this is uh, rather a, a Borchardt or a Luger 7.63, and they don't make it anymore. But that, basically, that's how it loads, uh, two springs, and these uh, they actually look like the end of a bullet. Uh, but they're not. But that was uh, the development of the first box magazine. Okay, let's uh, take a look at uh, some of the other parts. We've already gone over the holster. It's kind of unique, and there is a place uh, to put the strap. I'm going to show you the strap in a minute. Uh, but next, I think uh, probably everybody's wondering about this. And again, on the internet, you almost never see it with the original stock. Uh, this is numbered to the gun. Um, and uh, this action here is you just pop that on like that. Now with the Luger, it's a lot more robust. If you look at the, the Luger uh, lug, the Luger lug is a lot more robust and even when you pop it on there, you slide it up, there's then a locking device. What surprises me about this, as, as incredible as this uh, engineering is, uh, this is pretty flimsy. And so when I, remember I was saying I'm trying to figure out what this is? Well, live on camera, I'm, I'm here to tell you, I think, that this will lock it down. So let's try that out. Exactly. I actually, that's the first time I swear to you, that's the first time I tried that. And uh, that does lock. Actually, it's pretty sturdy. I take it back. It's it's phenomenal. That locks down. It's nice and tight. Now there's one other thing. Remember, I showed you this, and I said, "What the heck is it?" Well. I was wondering, well, what the heck is that? So, somebody already figured it out. This pulls down and pops in here. That popped right on there. You can also tighten this down. But this is a wooden cheek pad. So, if I'm holding it like this, I'll move back a little bit. You get the view. If I'm looking up close, that would be the cheek pad. Now I'd go with something a little softer, but that, that was the intent of the cheek pad right here. And that of course all fits in the, all comes apart and fits in the case. This was in the, in the case. I'm laughing at myself because again, I tried to find out from the internet, what the heck is it? So I looked at this and I said, oh, this must be, this is, this looks like a Luger um, cleaning, cleaning kit. Uh, basically they put oil in here and the Luger has the same thing and then you dab it on the little spots and so this is an oiler that makes sense but here's what I did with it I went like this and said oh this must go in here but that doesn't <laughs> it does fit but I'm making fun of myself because that's not what it does at all uh, you unscrew this all the way and then this all comes out, and that's the cleaning rod. Re and recognize this, by the way. Remember the zigzag cleaning rod on the Navy Luger? That is a zigzag cleaning rod for a bore shark. Isn't this incredible? 
So this all came together and it just goes in the box. It doesn't go, it doesn't go on the bottom of the bore chart. And please don't tell everybody that I did that uh, live on air because it just makes me look foolish. Um, but I just think this is all an incredible piece of machinery. So everything had its place. Everything uh, is beginning to make sense. I, I didn't get this piece and I didn't get what, you know, what's going on here. I still don't understand this cutout. I, I don't have an answer for that. But uh, this obviously is for the strap and it would go, I think you would carry it over your shoulder. Uh, but this, this end, it does spread apart uh, with a screwdriver very easily and then that just pops on there. If it doesn't go on right away, I'm, yeah, it goes on right away. So um, that, that hops on here and then the other piece of the strap, uh, just like the Navy Lugers, uh, this and the artillery lugers, there's a little button here and that will pop on here and on here. So turning it the right way with the strap hooked up, that's what it would look like and it would go over your shoulder. Now we have lugers with the guys carrying them over the shoulder, but the bore charts are so rare. Again, only 3,000 of these made. Uh, they were never uh, commercially successful. I'm going to kind of tell you the end of the story next. But you're not going to find anybody carrying this around uh, in, in the military because it was just never adopted by any of the militaries in the world. I mentioned before that I found a video with Craig Gottlieb shooting one. Uh, it's the only one I could find. Here's a very brief clip from that. This is the Borchardt C93. It's all very predictable though, because it does look exactly like a shooting a Luger. And I imagine shooting this would feel a lot like shooting a Luger. Now, uh, so what happened next? Let's, let's finish out the story of the bar chart and why is it that you never see these, um, you know, in, in the history books? Um, and it's because mostly the arrogance of uh, Hugo Borchardt. Many of the militaries around the world did ask for a prototype that they could try out, including the United States. And the feedback was all, it's, it's just, we love the semi-automatic, but it's just too bulky. This, this was uh, too bulbous and this was not comfortable. Um, it was also subject, if it got uh, dirt, it, was, uh, it, it didn't work re well. Uh, but the Swiss were the ones, the Swiss Army actually were the ones that gave it the most attention. They actually went back to Borchardt and they said, you know, we really like it, we'd like to order some, but we have some suggested changes. He responded that it's absolutely perfect and there's nothing here that needs to be changed. It sounds a lot like when my wife talks about me. But um, he said, no, there's nothing that needs to be changed. You're wrong, I'm right, it's absolutely perfect. A life lesson there, by the way, guys. <laughs> uh, because uh, if he had made those adjustments, we wouldn't be calling the Luger a Luger anymore. We'd probably be calling the Luger a Borchardt. Uh, so because he refused to change it, and by this time the name of the company was DWM, and guess who uh, Borchardt's assistant was? The man who worked alongside of him and helped in a lot of the development, in fact, um, uh, what, I, what I heard and saw or read was that uh, Luger was the one that did the final touches and the patenting of the box magazine, if you don't remember. So Luger uh, did a lot of the work on this magazine. Uh, and when Borchardt refused to do it, then DWM just said to uh, George Luger, hey, how about you? Would you be willing to make the changes that they've requested? And he said, absolutely. Uh, and so he went to work and came up with this. There you go. He came up with this. Um, and this, of course, is a Luger. It's actually a Swiss Luger in 30 caliber. Swiss Luger made in 1900. Let me show you that side because you can see the toggle a lot better. Notice how similar the toggle is. And remember the thing that bothered them the most was this bulbous end. He got rid of all of that, took the mainspring, uh, uh, the mainspring out of this bulbous piece. It probably has a real term to it, but I'm going to call it the bulbicizer. The bulbicizer, uh, and he put the mainspring into the uh, grip. He also uh, made the grip a lot more comfortable and put the magazine, he improved on the magazine. Uh, so now, of course, the magazine looks like this. Um, and he added, he added the grip safety and the rest is history. This is a 1900 Swiss Luger and this is a C93 uh, Hugo Borchardt pistol. 
Before signing off on this one, I just wanted to mention one other thing, um, and that is about the development of the semi-automatic. We already said that he gets credit for developing the first one. It had a few flaws um, and could have been worked out. But at the same time, Mauser, of course, a competing company, Mauser was working on this, also known as the broom handle, AKA the C96. So if you do the math, three years later, they came out with this design. Now, this is also a blowback, but if you know the C96, uh, it blows straight back. Instead of having the toggle action, it just bl blows straight back. It doesn't use a magazine, uh, which I think is a, was a much better invention by Borchardt slash Luger, um, but used a stripper clip that would uh, load from the top. The K98 did the same thing. And closing it down, I just have to do that. And so it's a very similar semi-automatic design. This one, however, they made hundreds of thousands of them. It was a commercial success, and Mauser went on to make other uh, semi-automatic pistols. Uh, Borchardt, and you'll have to forgive me for waxing uh, philosophical, uh, but um, some of you know, I, in my previous uh, life, I was a psychologist with a psychology practice. And um, one thing that I uh, was just commenting to Randy off camera, you know, uh, Borchardt came up with this design and uh, the, this invention, uh, which was brilliant, but he borrowed from other people he worked with. He borrowed from what he learned at Win Winchester and Sharps and I'm sure many other places. He, he borrowed from other people to come up with something that was uh, really a great invention. But when it came time to improve it, he didn't want to talk to anybody uh, because what he did was perfect and he really didn't want input from other people. So it's just kind of interesting that um, he probably would have been a lot more successful in life if he had been a little bit more humble. So uh, a word to the wise for all of us, uh, a lesson for today. Hope you enjoyed this video, especially enjoyed seeing the Borchardt and how I figured out how to put this all together.